What is up guys? Ed here. How you doing? Welcome back. I'm recording this on Easter, so happy Easter to everybody out there. Uh, yeah, today we're talking about summer shredding. So I'm coming up to the end of a bulk here. About to get all cut and lean for the summer. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to do that. Rocking the slick back hair today. Shiny shirt, because Easter, I guess you got to break out the cool shiny shirt. Anyway, yeah, before we get started, um, I would appreciate if you guys would leave a comment, subscribe, share these videos with your friends if you find anything helpful at all. Um, yeah, just, I feel like this is good info. Let's share it. So, let's talk about it. Summer shredding. Now, there are the obvious things that you should already have dialed in. We're going to talk about some quick, easy little lifestyle changes. And then from there, we're going to talk about supplements that you might want to consider or at least start looking into as we prepare for our summer cut. All right. The easy ones. We're going to get these out of the way first. These are just lifestyle changes that a lot of people don't consider when they want to get shredded. So yeah, everybody lifts weights. They think they eat healthy. At the end of the day, your diet probably sucks. So if you want to get shredded, the, the, the key thing that you're going to need is a high protein, low calorie diet. All right. The only way you're going to know that you're eating a high protein, low calorie diet is if you're tracking your macros. So get a calorie app tracker. I use Chronometer now. There's my fitness pal. There's a ton of them out there, but you got to get on a low calorie high protein diet carnivore diets the great example i mean you just literally eat meat then you're allowed to eat eggs and two and i don't know what other little stipulations are on the carnivore diet but that is a great example of a high protein low calorie diet still take your multivitamins and chip because you want to get all of your nutrients minerals vitamins all of that in so if you're not eating like fruits and veggies all the time you still want to be getting those nutrients in. Um, you're definitely going to want to increase your cardio. Duh, no brainer. Um, if you've got more calories burning and you're taking less calories in from your diet, you're going to be shedding weight. You're going to be shedding fat. And they say to do fasted cardio. So that's kind of the best way to do it. Your body uh, sheds the fat off easier when you do it in a fasted state. So say first time you wake up in the morning, don't eat breakfast yet. Do your cardio on an empty stomach. You're going to burn a little bit more fat than if you, you know, had a full stomach and then your body's using all those carbohydrates and everything for energy. You want to pull that fat and use that for energy. So do it in a fasted state. Still keep up with your weight training. Lift hard, lift heavy, lift often. The weights are important. So don't skip out on your weights. Just add a little bit of extra cardio on top. Uh, reduce your stress levels. Stress is going to kill you and it's going to make you fat and sloppy. So don't be stressed. Hard to do in today's world, but figure it out. Just stress less. All right. Uh, get adequate sleep. So many people I know, they like brag, they rant and rave. Oh man, I get so much done. I work so hard. I only sleep four hours a night and I'm, you know, the first one up at five o'clock in the morning every day to do this and that. Sleep eight hours. All right. You're going to you're going to crap out and your body's going to fail you if you keep doing four hours of sleep long term. It's not healthy. It's not good. It's not good for your stress levels. Fat literally melts off your body while you're sleeping. So get adequate sleep. This isn't going to be a whole video about sleep, but just know sleep is important. Another thing that you can do, everybody loves to like diet and follow certain diet trends and fads. Like I mentioned earlier, a high protein, low calorie diet is key. But another option is intermittent fasting. That's where you only eat for a certain window of the day. Say you give yourself six to eight hour window. You can only eat food within that six to eight hour window. The rest of the day, you are fasting. So say you wake up at, I don't know, eight o'clock. You don't eat your first meal until 10 o'clock. You have breakfast, you have lunch, and then dinner is at five or six o'clock from 10 to six. Boom. That's your eight hour window. No snacks before, no snacks after. Cut them all out. Eat in that little window, intermittent fasting. Boom. Easy way to get your body into fat burning mode. Because if your body always has food coming in, coming in, coming in, likes to store it as fat. Uh, when you don't have food coming in for extended periods of time, say 16 hours, your body is going to start eating that fat right off your bone. You're going to look nice and trim and lean and cut. So less calories, 
intermittent fasting, those are both great ideas. Cut out sugars, cut out alcohols. I know summertime is tough. Everybody wants to drink. They want to get loaded with their friends on the beach. And But if you can limit it to, you know, a few, that's great. Less alcohol, the better, because alcohol is going to make you sloppy. It sucks. Um, so those are easy little lifestyle changes. Now we'll get into the supplements. Obviously, I mean, if you guys watch my channel, you know I talk about a lot of supplements and the ones that are gonna do the most for you, the steroids, the SARMs, the peptides, the, the big daddy supplements. All right, so if you want the best bang for your buck and the best results, you're gonna have to use them. The downsides of using them, they're either gonna be injections or they're gonna mess with your hormone production. They're gonna suppress you, so. If you're getting into it and you want to be serious with it, those are the consequences you're going to have to deal with, um, but they are going to give you the best results. So, I mean, steroids, I make so many videos talking about them. Uh, SARMs, I have a few videos talking about some of my favorite SARMs. Go check them out. Peptides, they're really becoming a big thing nowadays with uh, the whole Ozempic craze, semaglutide. Everybody's using it in Hollywood for weight loss. There's like terzepatide, which is like its competitor. Um, 5-amino-1-MQ, another one that's great for weight loss. There's a lot of peptides out there, but you guys are going to have to inject them. So I don't know how serious you are, uh, where you are in your fitness goals, but I'm assuming a lot of people just wanting to get a little bit more cut for the summer. They don't want to suppress their testosterone levels. They don't want to be doing injections all the time. So we can talk about a few different other supplements, more natural supplements, ones you can take that are orally bioavailable. And let's get into those now. These are, these next few that I'm going to name, um, they're good for boosting testosterone. Anytime you can boost testosterone, that is going to increase muscle mass, decrease fat, give you more energy. So my guys out there, anytime you can increase your testosterone, uh, that's just gonna help big time with losing fat, gaining muscle. So, Tungkot Ali is one of the supplements. I think I make a video somewhere, go check it out. Um, it's an herbal supplement from Southeast Asia. It was used for male infertility and ED, but they found out it increased testosterone, so it has a lot of good benefits as far as muscle building and fat loss. Fidoja agrestis, uh, many times this is paired with Tungkot Ali. Check this one out. Uh, it is derived, you know, in Africa, Southeast Asia. It was used as an aphrodisiac, but they found out that it can increase testosterone. So, Fidoja agrestis, Tunkat Ali, many times paired together, they can raise your testosterone by quite a bit. Um, and clomiphene is another one. This one, uh, it's actually an isomer from Clomid. So, if you're familiar with steroids and PCT drugs, you know that Clomid, Novadex, are your typical PCT drugs. Well, N clomiphene is extracted from the Clomid. There's two isomers in Clomid, one of them being N clomiphene, um, which has less side effects, but it's still that's kind of what does everything as far as restoring your body's natural testosterone production. So, a lot of people use N clomiphene to kickstart their HPTA. Um, get their balls working, making testosterone after a cycle. But it can also be used kind of as a base for your cycle um, if you don't want to do like injections. So some guys will do like an oral only cycle where they'll take like D-ball, but you still need your testosterone base. So they'll use n as a testosterone base. Um, I wouldn't recommend using n long long-term. It's more... Uh, you know, it was derived as a fertility medication, actually. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it long term. You can use it for short cycles, use it for a PCT, or if you want to have babies, that's your time using clomiphene. This one isn't like a long term. Um, you know, as like testosterone, for example, testosterone you can be on for the rest of your life. Cool, a nice TRT dose. You won't have many side effects doing that. You still got to control everything, but n clomiphene. Not great for long term. Still, go check it out. Do your research on it. Um, there are a lot of supplements that can be used to speed up fat burning. Um, some of these are lumped in with SARMs. For example, two I'll talk about right here, Carterine and MK677. Commonly grouped with SARMs. They're not actually SARMs. The first one, Carterine, is a PPAR agonist. Um, it's good for athletic performance, fat loss. It can increase your cardio. But there's a lot of studies on it that have been linked to like 
cancerous effects when you take it in really, really high dosages for a long time. So do your research on carterine before you try that out. I've tried it myself. Um, I kind of do a lot of experiments on myself and then I give you guys the feedback on it. So I think I did make a video on carterine as well. Um, MK677, that one's a growth hormone secretagogue. Um, it, it can increase energy expenditure to aid in fat loss. It can increase muscle mass through the GH and IGF-1 pathways. So this is like a growth hormone mimic. So a lot of big bodybuilders, they do steroids and they do growth hormone. MK677, I always say, is like the poor man's growth hormone. Um, it works. It'll make you very hungry. So you got to watch out for that if you're wanting to cut. It will help you cut down, but you got to fight that hunger that it's going to give you because it will make you very, very hungry. So if you're going to be cutting for the summer, you want to be in a calorie deficit. MK might make it a little bit hard to do that. Um, and another thing to watch out for is just uh, anytime you take growth hormones or anything that will boost GH, IGF-1, MK677 as well, that can mess with your insulin sensitivity. So be careful with that. Uh, intermittent fasting can help with insulin sensitivity. There's supplements out there such as berberine that can help. Even cinnamon they found can help with insulin sensitivity. So those are all good things. Um, L-carnitine, that's another supplement people love for fat loss. It comes in an oral version and an injectable version. The oral version uh, can increase this compound called TMAO, which they have said can lead to cancerous effects as well. So if you're going to take L-carnitine, I wouldn't take high doses orally uh, for extended periods of time. L-carnitine is going to be most effective in an injectable form, but if you don't want to inject, there is that oral option available. Um, this is another one that's just common for athletic performance, uh, fat loss, endurance. It's got a lot of good properties. Uh, L-carnitine. And then one that I'm very excited about because I'm getting ready to try it out for the first time is Alpha Yohimbine. It is extracted from the Yohimbi plant. Um, it acts as a stimulant and an aphrodisiac. It seems like a lot of these compounds were kind of first made as, you know, a, a libido booster or fertility medication, stuff like that. But then they found out that they have other properties as well. So that's why people use Alpha Yohimbine uh, originally as like a stimulant aphrodisiac. Um, but it can aid in fat loss. Uh, it aids in fat loss exceedingly well when paired with fasted cardio. Um, so if you're going to use alpha yohimbine, I would use that, you know, in the morning with fasted cardio. But again, guys, do your research. This isn't a deep dive on each of these individual supplements. These are just ones that you can look into to increase overall fat burning, muscle building potential for your upcoming summer cut. So... I hope you guys got a little bit of good information on this, a good starting point for some good supplements to look into, some lifestyle changes that you can switch up now that will have a great impact on your summer cut. So if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, drop them below, head out. That's all I got for you. Happy Easter and all that. Bye-byes.